Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Bennett, this is the Ramble. This is the program that goes until midnight tonight, Eastern Time. Okay, here we go. Now, uh, what we do is we this is we're calling Stephen Pearl, and every time we call Stephen, we we just start the the call ringing because, uh, well, you know, you'll see. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Calling Las Vegas, by the way. Is he going to answer? I think that worked. Hello, chop him up. We'll take him to Petey's over there. Hello? <laughs> oh, shit. That, was, that didn't broadcast, did it? Crank call. Crank call. Oh, oh uh, yeah, it, it broadcast. Uh, you're, you're, oh, you, you've been found oh, out. Oh, jeez. Okay, we're finished. But in Vegas. We're going to move the family to Cicero now. <laughs> in, in, in Vegas, that's how you do business, huh? That's how we do business. It's not a bump in the road. That's no bump in the road. That was Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Stephen. <laughs> see, that in, see that hole in the desert? That's Vinny. <laughs> Hello, Stephen. Hello, Alex. How are you today on this wonderful, what is it, Tuesday? Or it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Day before Thanksgiving. It was, the indigenous people call it Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> As the indigenous people call it Thursday, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thursday, or the pissed off indigenous people call it fucking Thursday. <laughs> Here, here come the Charlie Hill used to say, here come the white backs. Well, I'll tell you, you, know, people. I, I, you, you're like me, you know, you're a little, <clears throat> nothing pleases you, you know. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, 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 old Jew, you're, old jaded you're, pity Jew. You're, you're ready to put everything down like me, but when it comes to yep. Thanksgiving, I'm a fucking sucker, okay? No, I like it. You get to, you get to be Elvis for a day. Put more M&Ms in the turkey, man. I'll die helping us. Thank you very much. In fact, I was talking to a guy in Dubai last night. Who was saying that they celebrate Thanksgiving in Dubai? You know, not that really? it's, not that it's a national holiday or anything like that, but turkeys are available and turkey dinners where he works, you uh -huh. know, and things like that. Uh -huh. uh, because he says it's the one holiday that throughout the world is kind of universal. I mean, no matter what religion you are or what kind of people you are, you can always find uh, a moment in a year to sit down and just say, "Hey." Let's all have a nice meal and give thanks for that which we ha have, you know. That's true. Even in Saudi Arabia, they go, let's carve up a journalist today. More white meat, please. <laughs> <laughs> they celebrate everywhere in their own way. Yeah. <laughs> I get yeah. the bones on my friend. It's Thanksgiving. But that's what I like about Thanksgiving. I think it's, it's just, I don't know, I, I, I just always liked it because it's extra warm, you know. It is nice. It is nice. This is the first Thanksgiving in years I have no plans for. I'm just going to hang out. I'm doing a show that night. So uh, I'll probably go to Subway and have a turkey sandwich and then uh, have a big boffo comedy show. Well, what do you usually do on Thanksgiving? Well, I get together with friends and have a nice dinner or brunch or whatever you want to call it. A lot of turkey, the usual, the stuffing. And you know, I don't like cranberry sauce, but it's there. And, you know, the usual. But uh, this year, huh? my wife is in California, and uh, I'm here with my friend Tamayo, and uh, we'll probably have sushi or something. Oh. And then I'll do my show that night. What's she doing in California? She, uh, my, she, her mom, her, her mom is there, and she's old, and she's taking care of her. So you know, she's just watching after her. So oh, okay. uh, she's up there. I'm down here. My friend Tamayo Atsuki, who owns the unit, is staying with me. She's fun. Yeah. She's a former comedian and now current property owner and uh, owner of my property. And uh, who knows? We'll probably just have sushi and mussels, and then I'll do my show that night. Now, uh, you know, on Thanksgiving, we have to talk about things which are. See, we'll do. This is Thanksgiving themed, folks. Um. Yep. We have to give thanks for stuff. Oh, sure. Well, you know, I like to give thanks for the success of Joey D and the Starlighters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just happy I'm healthy and alive and, uh, you know, things are good right now. And, 
you know, well, that's not whatever. Yeah, it's still another another year around the sun. Well, you know, it's been a big year for you because you you've changed. Been, it, what? Yeah, big changes, big changes in here. It was my fortune cookie last February. I should have believed it, but uh, yeah, I came to Vegas and I really like it here. And you stay here, you get to see all your friends pass through, which is a lot of fun. And uh, I'm, I'm working. I'm doing shows. I do more shows in a week here than I did a, in a year in California. So. I'm grateful and thankful for that. So you're a working comedian again because you moved to Vegas. Yep. So far I'm working. I'm working this week. I don't know about next week, but we'll see what happens. Well, uh, you know, I mean, the fact is you're working. You know, where yeah, where in the I'm Bay, enjoying it. When the, I'm having it, fun. Where in the Bay Area you weren't. And that's sad because you were really a staple of San Francisco comedy. Oh, sure. I was a star in three area codes. Thanks to you. You made me a big star in three area codes back there. And, uh, but that was then, and this is now, and, uh, you know, it's, it's different. So, and, uh, the thing I like about Vegas is there's, there is comedy work all over the place, and they seem to be hiring the older comics like myself. So I really enjoy that. I've been working with a lot of guys with gray hair. So. Well, you know, I, <laughs> they're all really good. I don't mean this in any negative way, okay? But your, uh, your comedy, and your sound and your style are very suited to Vegas. Well, yeah, I put on my sparkly tuxedo. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> my but, Gary Lewis cufflinks, and I'm ready to go. But you got that New York thing going for you, you know? Well, the, the, the audience is like anywhere else, you know. Some of them, you know, they just, they just, most of them want to laugh. So especially if you go to, like, the Laugh Factory, where they're really there to laugh and have a good time. And uh, last night at the at Jokesters inside the D Hotel, which is actually an A Hotel, they just called it the D Hotel. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, it was killer. The crowd was amazing. So I don't know. I, it just worked. Everything worked. The other now, two guys were funny you, too. You, and uh, yeah, you work. Uh, you work which clubs there now? Uh, uh, right now, Jokesters, which is uh, 301 Fremont Street. I'm there all, all, all whenever you're listening to this. I don't know, but I play there often. And uh, sometimes I open for Carl LeBeau's Midnight Show at the Tropicana at the Laugh Factory there, and Midnight Show on Friday and Saturday. And I uh, just work wherever I can, whoever wants me. I'm available. Yeah. We'll uh, joke for food. Well, we'll joke for cheese food. Well, Fremont, if I remember correctly, is the main street in downtown Las Vegas. Not on the Strip, but it's in downtown Las Vegas. The one that everybody's kind of familiar with because that's the one they really show to establish Vegas. Yeah. Well, that's the one where you, you know, right behind the clothes, there's this big, long, you know, streets or street or whatever. You can, it's just like, you got a roof on it, and there's like concerts, and there's stuff, and there's dispensaries. Well, you know, it's years, like really jammed. It's a lot of fun. Years ago, there was, no, there, there was no roof on there. Years ago. And then they put the, yeah. they put the neon canopy on, on top of it, and it became kind of like this gambling mall. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and, and I often found it uh, kind of spectacular that they did that. But the if you look uh -huh. at old movies from from the past where they show Las Vegas, it's always just an open sky there. You know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they got they got the glass roof now. It's it's very cool. It's very cool. There's something going on there now. And uh, on Halloween, it was insane, <laughs> but it's usually pretty crowded anyway. Now, so now you, it's a lot of fun. As a comedian, uh, when you can afford it, you have to eat, okay? Yep. Everybody has to eat. And now you're in Vegas, the, ho yep. the home of endless buffets. Exactly. <laughs> now, do you eat? Well, nobody's starving. Nobody's starving here. Do you eat at the buffets? I've been to the buffets, but no, like anywhere else, usually I just go to the supermarket. I try to eat healthy these days, a lot of vegetables and, uh, and the fishes and stuff like that, you know, oh, yeah. occasional pizza and ice cream and stuff. But uh, uh, no, I usually do most of the stuff at the supermarket, microwave or cook or boil or whatever you have to do here at the house. Now, the buffets, I'll a lot. Are the buffets still 99 cents or are they um, more expensive? Uh, I think they shot up to $3 or maybe like three fifty or something. Yeah, yeah. and you but, would go uh, in there if, and, if you, and it was just... Uh, like I remember, the best buffet <laughs> I ever had was at the um, uh, the Mirage. Uh -huh. uh, I think it was the Mirage, and they had this buffet that would choke a horse. I mean, it was expensive. It cost like <laughs> tw twenty bucks, which is expensive for uh -huh. a buffet in yeah. uh, in Vegas. But it was wonderful. They got everything. Yeah, you see everything from like soup to nuts, sushi to steak, everything you want. We've been to a couple of those. Yeah, and uh, they still say they still. It's, it's yeah. I don't know how much it is now, but uh, I was I was a guest, so but uh, they got some good stuff here. 
You won't starve if you have a few dollars, but uh, usually I'm a just supermarket and cook at home guy. What you got to learn if you're going to live in Vegas is probably stay away from the buffets because there's no easier way to put on the pounds because exactly, half, exactly. half the yeah, stuff right. is like starches, <laughs> right? Uh-huh. And yep. uh, the other is uh, don't gamble. Well, I'm lucky. I'm too cheap to gamble. I've never been a drinker, and I don't whore around, so the, the temptations mean absolutely nothing to me. I walk through the casino, ding, ding, brr, brr, ding, ding, that doesn't mean anything to me, and uh, you know, off to the show. I just, I just do the comedy show and hang out. Well, I mean, if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna survive Vegas as a performer, you cannot be a gambler. Mm-hmm. You know, you just oh no, that will that'll fuck you up big time, or you'll like, you'll owe some boys some money, and you don't want that. So. I mean, pe- what people don't understand about Vegas because whenever they go to Vegas, they see the Strip, they see Fremont Street, they see all the glitz and glamour of the uh, uh-huh. of the casinos, but that there is a pretty formidable population there that uh, uh-huh. that is not there on vacation. They live there. Uh-huh. Yeah, a lot of people live here, so and a lot of people are moving here too. It's a very big, growing city because of the, you know, especially in California, where the yeah. rents are just sky high. How much is the rent here? Bend over, okay, we're moving to Las Vegas. And, so. and I've known people um, who live in, uh, in Vegas, and I, I say to them, "What about you know the Strip and so on?" They say, "I never go down there," you know. Yeah, I, I, the only I really reason I work, and the only reason you probably go down there is because uh, you're um, uh, you're working there. Exactly. I go where I have to work. So, you know, yeah. I don't go there. You know, I'm not like, I'm to swing with Tony, baby, going to the strip to hang out. I don't do that. I'm home a lot. Just, uh, I'm sick. I just turned 63 last week. So I just like to be home with the cats and the computer and the TV. And I'm very happy. And then when I got to go work, I go out. And then when I'm done working, I come home. Yeah. So, I mean, it, 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 you know, but that's what you got to do there. You know, you can't yeah. uh, you you can't let the city be dictate your life. Uh, exactly, exactly. I'm not. You know, a lot of people like fly in from Ohio or wherever, and they blow the kids' college fund, and they have their fun, and then they leave. But uh, oh, no, I live here, and it's a it's a fine place. They always and, talk uh, about the rents are reasonable, and here we are. They also always talk about Vegas as being a uh, uh, Vegas as being a, uh, a desert, but really, it's a valley. Yep. Uh, it's a desert here, but there's stuff they've built. They've built, you know, since 1947, since Mr. Siegel came here and had a dream. I never lived to see it, but uh, actually, it wasn't. Uh, believe it, it or not, nice. that that is revisionist because supposedly he didn't have the dream. Somebody else did, and he muscled him out of it. Nah, he couldn't. He, no, he moved in on someone else's dream. That's pretty tough. The, the, it's pretty, you know. It wasn't this kind of thing where he was in the middle of the desert and he said, "Here's where I'm going to build." You know, no. Yeah. Like some guy was already building the flamingo. It wasn't called the flamingo. Oh, but he okay. was Building a hotel. Oh, he just took it. And he moved <laughs> he in and uh, took it away from him. You know. Oh my God. But uh, Bugsy, you dirty rat. The history of Vegas is kind of interesting, though, that that when uh, the uh, Mormons were coming out, you know, west, they had a choice of two places places to settle. One was uh-huh. Salt Lake City, what's what is now Salt Lake City. And the other uh-huh. what it was, what is now a valley uh, in Nevada called Las Vegas. And, Las Vegas. Uh, they, they chose uh, and then. They did come back here. There, are, if you notice, there are a lot of Mormons living in Vegas uh, uh-huh. for that very reason, and also because the mob, when they were hiring pit bosses and people to run the casinos, they hired the Mormons because they were totally honest and wouldn't steal from them. Oh yeah, they wouldn't skim or they wouldn't gamble or anything like that. Get some Mormons, same. Yeah, you can trust those bastards, same. Right? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, Las Vegas has this uh, very interesting history. I mean, mob built, created, and then the mob was thrown out by Howard Hughes. Yep. And he threw him out in a very interesting way that only a a billionaire can do. He bought bought them out. He bought all the hotels. Uh, Could afford to. You know. (laughs) Yep. He, in fact, he was at uh, one hotel... And he saw a hotel across the street. I think, I'm trying to remember which one it was, maybe the Stardust. And he didn't like the lighting on the Stardust because it was coming into his room. So he bought the hotel so he could turn the lights off. (laughs) 
He was a sick man, a very sick man. But what a oh uh, boy! Yeah, yeah. but I'm trying to sell that man some fingernail clippers. Vegas, oh. Vegas has a great storied history, and of course, the history that is portrayed in the movie Casino is probably the most interesting of them all. Yeah, uh, uh-huh. in that uh, uh, that is a true story. I mean, they, 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 these these guys came in there, and this one one guy who was. Uh, they brought in this this uh, bookmaker. I can't I'm trying to remember his name now. The one played by De Niro, to run one of their hotels, and uh-huh. then they brought in this other guy. I think they called him Nicky in the movie or something. Like Nicky, that. yeah, the Joe Pesci guy. Yeah, the Joe Pesci Chicago. guy to yeah. babysit him. Okay, to make sure number oh, one, God. nobody hurt him, and uh, yeah. he wasn't doing <laughs> well, any stealing. And that's what that whole yeah. movie is about. It really happened, and the hotel wasn't the, uh, I can't remember what they call it in the movie, but the movie. They, they called it the, the, the Tangiers. Which the Tangiers, really exist, yeah. As we all know. It actually, the hotel was the uh, was the Stardust. Stardust, uh, oh, I yeah, bet. Yeah, I don't know if it's still there anymore. but uh, uh, they, they, They're blowing stuff up all the time and rebuilding. It's it's amazing. Oh, I know. It's, come, uh, come to Vegas. Come grow with us. The, the interesting kind of, Dichotomy in in Vegas was was said was made an example to me when I was there once, and about eleven o'clock in the morning, I went over to Circus Circus to get some breakfast, and I go into the main room, and there is a woman uh, on top of a pole that's on a guy's forehead. That goes up twenty five feet in the air, and then she swings around <laughs> on the pole. Yikes! And all I could think. So we're my, dating now, but all I could think to myself was, this is the only place in the world where at eleven o'clock in the morning you could see somebody doing that. <laughs> okay. twenty four hours, baby. And and I oh, said, you, you, yeah. Oh, and, go ahead. and the other part of it that got to me was, I said, what morning did she wake up and say, "I've got a great idea for a job." You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I have an early show and a late show. The early show is at eleven a.m. The late show is at one. <laughs> <laughs> it's really you go into the supermarket here, and they have uh, what do you call them? The uh, the, the slot machines right at the beginning. I, it's people at uh, Smith Supermarket just well, like what, playing the slots. It's insane. What I loved is at the airport they've got the slot machines just yep. as, just as you're getting on the plane. I mean, they, they're they not going to take a chance. They <laughs> oh, they're want, right on the way in, on the way out. They don't fuck around. They, they're, like, they're, they're like trying to wring out every last dime you have on you. Yeah. You know, and so, <laughs> and, and what are you putting into this slot machine at the airport? But all the loose change you've got in your pocket that's still. Yeah, so just vacuum your pockets on the way out. You take the dime thing. and you play the dime machine. You got a nickel, you play the nickel <laughs> machine, a quarter, a dollar. By the time you get to San Francisco, by the time you get home, uh, you don't have any change in your pocket. They got yeah, it they all. Yeah, they were grandma's crack fund. We're fucked. They got it all. Uh, yeah. I never really gambled much. I, I just, you know, sometimes I'll play the slot machines for fun. And one time I went and I won a couple thousand dollars, actually. Well, wow, nothing wrong with that. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Ones, I, I played the quarters and I won 75 bucks or something in but quarters, which is pretty cool. <laughs> the, the reason I'm not a good gambler, and it's probably the same reason you are, besides the fact that we're Jews and we have the reputation, you know, of being cheap. Uh-huh. Uh, yep. <laughs> it, it, if the thrill of losing is as strong as the thrill of winning, then you're a gambler. Then you're yep. an addicted yep. gambler. But if the thrill of losing, there is no thrill in losing, and there's very little thrill in winning for you, then you're not a gambler. You know, yep. like I just, I don't want to walk away from Vegas and say, I lost $10,000. Exactly. Exactly. I couldn't do that. I, I want to jump off a bridge or something. I've never, I've never been a taker of chance when it comes to putting your money in the slot and hoping for the best. And I'd say, you know, I, I because I had that big win once. I think overall in gambling casinos, I've come out now about even. You know, uh-huh. I never lost money. I never made money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's called lucky. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, I, I I don't know about you. I just don't. I uh, gambling just holds no great thrill for me 
because you know if I same, yeah same thing for me I play the nickel slots usually if I did it all I take a two dollar roll of nickels I lose like okay I'm done gambling well I play the dollar machines you know and one time as I say I hit I don't I think it was like twenty three hundred dollars or something like that nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that so I then I went over well, what I did with the twenty three hundred dollars I took I said let me take two hundred of it. And let me go play those really expensive slot machines, you know, with the five dollar machines. Oh yeah, the ones with a really big handle. You got to reach up the pole. No, 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 not that one. There's an actual like slot machine area where they have the high priced slot machines. Uh -huh. and, and what I found is when <laughs> I used them, I won another three hundred dollars. And the reason holy was, crap, the ching. No, the, the currency gods were with you that night. The cheaper the the slot machine, like the five cent slot machines, the late least payout they give. But if you're playing yeah. like a ten dollar machine, and they have some of those, you're playing a ten dollar machine. Uh, it's going to it's going to be pretty liberal in its payout because it's uh -huh. it's going to get a little bit from you eventually. You know, yeah. Uh, so they, <laughs> it's much different. Uh, those those slot machines. There's also something I don't know. Yeah. I've I've heard this from from gamblers that if you're going to play a slot machine, play one that's near like an aisle or something like that, because they uh -huh. have the best payouts. <laughs> because it, it because if it's paying out and making that ding 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 ding, it will attract people into that aisle. Ah. So there are certain machines you can play that will have a better pay payout than others. The nasty thing about slot machines, and the thing that everyone listening to me should remember if you ever go to Vegas or anywhere where there's gambling, is slot machines are totally a mechanical object. And they can be uh, set for what kind of payoff they want. Ah, okay? sure. Whereas when you're playing roulette or you're playing blackjack, there isn't that element. You know, there's no mechanical element involved, and yeah. you probably you have a better chance of, of winning in those. Well, you yep. have a better chance because the odds are still in favor of the house. Of but, course, yeah. But uh, slot <laughs> machines are, and I used to play them like crazy. They're, they're purely mechanical, and they can set them for what they want as the, as the amount sure. of payout. So, yeah. You know, um, I... I I, I, every one billion, every one billion play, it'll pay two dollars. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> no, what what it's meant to do is to give you enough back that you keep playing. Okay. Yeah. In other words, it doesn't let you go. You know, twenty pulls, or now you just push a button. Yeah. It used yeah. to be I had to pull a handle. <laughs> you break even. It used if you're to really be I had to pull even. a handle. Now all you have to do is push a button. Okay. Yeah, I know that's that's no fun. And, I like the old fashioned ones. But you 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 push the button and um it will pay out, you know, if if you push it twenty times, it'll pay out maybe three times during that, just to keep you interested. Yeah. You know, so there's an addiction to it. And now here comes the best part of you ever you've been into casinos, obviously, because you've been working in them lately. Of course. I know the casino is like the back of my hand. There is a science to the casinos. And this is a piece of the science you maybe haven't noticed. Have you ever noticed the rugs? They're quite colorful, quite the colorful patterns. They have they have the very they have major patterns on them. You know why? Uh, I have no of, idea. They're a, hieroglyphics. It's a form of hypnosis. Ah. It 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 kind of makes you uh, disoriented and it's me it's it's <laughs> it meant sure it's meant to do that because it's meant to keep you in the casino wow okay. that and all the oxygen they pump in you also may notice you cannot see the outdoors from the indoors it's always nope. it's always nighttime inside right. the casino so, and there's, there's no clocks anywhere clocks are illegal here that's right and the reason they being... They find out about my watch, I'm going to jail. The reason being, they don't want people to look at the clock and see how long they've been there. Exactly. Oh, my God, I've got to get back back to the room. Or, I've got to leave tomorrow. Or, no, or, they don't or, want you to know what time it or is. Look, Stay in. Look out Stay the, in the casino where it's always nighttime. Look out at the end and see a door that's uh, that's uh, clear and notice that it's now morning. 
where it was night when you yeah. started. You know, so <laughs> yep. so that that's also another part of completely disorienting you. So that when you're in this atmosphere, you're kind of in a bubble. You know. Yep. It's interesting. Yeah, the doors aren't clear either. You just see the doors. Well, that's the way out. I don't know if it's light or dark. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, you know, once you get out, then you know that science that I'm talking about has been going on since the very beginning, since they first discovered these things worked. And you can go, am I right about the rugs in the in the casinos? Oh, sure. You don't see like a plain brown rug in there. It's like, it's got a whole bunch of like, uh, swirly, on a pimp's jacket or something. Yeah, but swirly patterns and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Maybe, anyway. I mean, it's like the whole thing's made of hard candy. It's amazing. Have yourself a happy Thanksgiving, uh, Stephen. Uh, you too, my friend. No, no plans, really, but uh, yeah. I'll just have a fun show, and I'll be give thanks for that. Well, make plans a couple of weeks from now, and we'll do it all over again. There you go. Ladies no and problemo, gentlemen, man. the lovely and attractive Stephen Pearl. Bye, Stephen. Thank you very much, Alex. My friends call me Dimples. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap. The Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, everybody. That's uh, it's Stephen Pearl. I hope you enjoyed Stephen. I enjoy Stephen. I like Stephen. Stephen's an old friend, and uh, we enjoy what he does. Hold on a second. I want to get there. That makes my earphones louder. Hi. How are you? Yeah, it's uh, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and we're taking tomorrow off and Friday off, uh, two days off. And in our stead, uh, let's see, tomorrow we'll have some old radio programs that are themed uh, to, to uh, Thanksgiving. And then uh, on Friday, uh, we'll be playing a bunch of old uh, interviews that I've done over the years, along with some of the programs uh, of the past year from uh, our fine people here at, uh, at Gabnet. So uh, um, be listening for that, and then over the weekend... Uh, will be uh, the uh, flashback programs. Okay, so uh, uh, and then we'll see you again on next uh, Tuesday. So goodbye, everybody. No, uh, we got to do a show still here. So let me open up the Skype lines. If you don't know how to use the Skype lines, go over to gabnet.net, and right over there on the right hand side of the page, it'll tell you exactly how you can do all of it. And it's uh, very simple to tell you the damn truth. Uh, and uh, while you're there, if you, if you don't want to go there because you might miss uh, the wonderful video that we're doing here, uh, uh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, we uh, uh, have a video going on over there so that you can see it. Uh, boy, I'm, I'm looking at this one video that I have, one of the feeds that I have here, and it's like about five minutes old. It's uh, some of these. Sometimes the feeds run behind on certain machines, and they're never the same on the on the same machines. So anyway, our lines are open, folks. If you're interested, if you're uh, um, a person out there who wants to call us, I don't know. Will we get any callers tonight? I mean, after all, tomorrow is a a major holiday, and a lot of people are probably getting ready for Thanksgiving, or they're they're traveling uh, along for Thanksgiving. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, whatever. So, um, uh, our, uh, our, uh, Skype, uh, address here is GabNet Live, and you just use that, and you can call us. So, anyway. Mm. Mm. So, do I have anything to talk about? I really don't have anything to talk about. Most of my life has been, uh, is just, uh, it's kind of, uh, um, uh, copacetic i guess you know so um i i it's I, I keep saying that i don't seem to have adventures anymore i used to have adventures where i could come here and say oh guess what happened to me yesterday and then i'd go into this whole rant and tell a story that would go on for an hour about what went on yesterday and uh nothing like that happened uh we've just had guests staying here at the at the manse in the uh in the guest room uh, and uh, 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 Bub uh, Bubaloo uh, Vickers, as we like to call him, or Buddy Love. He's gone by several names over the years. Uh, Bubaloo Vickers, uh, and then he was uh, Buddy Love, and I know him as Robert Vickers. Uh, it, you know, 
anyway, good guy, great guy, bought me a hat. How can you hate a guy who'll buy you a hat, okay? And his lovely wife, Rachel, and they were out here, and uh, now they're gone. They're on their way down south uh, to spend Thanksgiving with the family and then on their way back to San Frangima. Anyway, I, isn't anybody going to call tonight? Uh, I, I, I assume the lines are working. Um, but I guess I have to sit here and wait and see if anybody does call. I mean, even Phil? No Phil? Uh, that's interesting. Oh, well, here comes Tom. Uh, I see he's coming online. So he'll talk to me. Uh, but I, I, I just, where's everybody else? Is it that, uh, is it that, is it that bad? Okay. All right. We'll just, uh, sit here and wait for somebody to call. Uh, you know, I, um, uh, this is our big Thanksgiving show. Aren't you excited that it's our big Thanksgiving show? Um, so our, our, uh, our, our number to call on Skype uh, by the way, there is a phone number, and it's over there on the uh, on the Gabnet page. Um, but here comes Tom. I saw him signing on. I saw you signing on, Tom. Yeah. And, we, and we can always depend on Tom when nobody else calls. Hi. Well, fortunate I'm home tonight. Huh? Fortunate I'm home tonight. You're fortunate you're home tonight. Yeah. I mean, where's everybody else? Usually we hear from Phil. Usually we maybe hear from Scott. But I guess these people are just uh, everybody's left town. Maybe. Could be. <laughs> could, could be just be you and me. Maybe. Yeah. So what are you doing for Thanksgiving? Uh, go to a potluck. Yeah. Okay. That's always yeah. fun. Uh, yeah. I I never uh, I've never actually I can't I don't know if I've ever been to a potluck. What defines a potluck? You got to bring something. You got to <laughs> yeah, in other words you bring something and somebody else brings something and somebody else yeah. brings something. But how do you make sure that nobody bring uh, everybody doesn't bring the same stuff? Like everybody doesn't bring the candied yams. That's why they call it a potluck. Uh, uh, oh, 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 you mean you might sometimes, it, you know, you know, sometimes sometimes they'll try to organize it. So, like, one way you could organize a potluck to they'll say, like, if your last name is between A and F, bring a main dish. If it's between G and H, bring a, a dessert uh, or side dish or something. And, so, and sometimes they're organized yeah. like this, but the what I'm going to tomorrow is not really particularly that organized. Oh, I see. So is somebody bringing a turkey? I don't know. If somebody might bring a turkey. I'm not. I'm bringing uh, pasta and pesto. Pasta pesto. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's nice. That, yeah. That's good. We have, uh, we have, by the way, we have uh, our good friend Jeff is here. And uh, also in uh, Dubai, Bree. Hello, Bree. Hi, Alex. How are you? Can you turn on your camera, or is it too early? It's too early. Just waking up. <laughs> just I'm not... using a new phone. I got a I got a Nokia 2.1, so I'm glad it's working. Oh, okay. Well, is there anything special about the 2.1? Uh, I just like the color of it. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. All right. Well, you seem to get new phones all the time. Yeah, I'm kind of a gadget guy. Yeah. 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 What? What? what uh, uh, I, I, the one thing about gadgets is, is that uh, uh, they come w uh, completely built in with a certain thing called buyer's remorse. <laughs> you know. Uh, and I'm wondering, what have you bought recently that you have buyer's remorse for? Well, um, I, I. When I was in the Philippines, I think you knew I uh, I have this Yoda phone, the the dual screen phone, and I dropped it, uh -huh. and so I had to get a backup when I came back to Dubai before I came back to the U.S. So I bought a really really inexpensive Android uh, from a no name brand. Uh, it's called iBrit, and boy, that it just was terrible. I mean, it got me through the trip to the states, but yeah, it just was. Yeah, it was giving me so many headaches, so well, that's why I switched over to the Nokia. Was it a it's cheap? Also, was it a cheap phone? The Nokia sounds a yeah. little. The sound doesn't sound that good. 
Oh, boy. Okay. It sounds a little kind of bassy, doesn't it, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Skips around. Yeah. But, uh, uh, well. well this, this is 100 bucks. No, oh, well, for a hundred bucks, it could uh, it could make you sound like a woman, and it wouldn't matter, you know. <laughs> could do anything it wants yeah, to. The, uh, you were talking about potlucks there. Yeah. And uh, what is the difference? Oh, oh uh, by the way, potluck is now legal in California. I should mention that. <laughs> oh, so it's a covered dish. It's covered a- dish event. Oh, it has to be a covered dish. Well, you wouldn't want to bring luck, nobody, no, nobody would want to eat an uncovered from an uncovered dish, would they? Well, I don't know, but uh, potluck implies that you're going and the person is going to create a bunch of different dishes for you to eat, like you don't know what it is. But if you're bringing something, that's different. Yeah. Like, I've, yeah. So uh, different places in the country have different ways to refer to this. Event, the event process. yeah. Me, what I know, I what I would bring because I'm I'm this kind of guy. I would bring romaine salad. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, Tom. As actually um, yesterday at the farmers market, I actually bought a uh, head of romaine, and I've been eating it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> salad, yeah. For the farmers it's poison market. now, right? Uh, well, no. It, I checked the farm, and the, and the farm is is actually down in Hollister, which is where the uh, these this so called tainted lettuce is from. No, but they don't know it. At, at the, I just heard tonight they don't know where the tainted lettuce is from. They they narrowed it down to Monterey and uh, and uh, oh, San really? Benito County. Oh, really? Because I heard that they hadn't figured it out yet, and you know, I mean, only about. 30 people have gotten the trots around the country or whatever E. coli does to you. Uh, and uh, uh, yet they're telling everybody, throw out your, your romaine salad. And if you had it stuffed in a, in, a, in a bin in your refrigerator, clean out the bin and do all of that. And then turkeys. There's a whole turkey scare out there. Now, that's a, that's a really lousy thing to do. You know. Yeah, Thanksgiving definitely. Oh, did uh, did uh, Trump pardon the chickens this year? The turkeys this oh, year? Oh, he pardoned turkey yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. Peas and carrots. Peas and carrots were the names of the. Of the yeah. <laughs> you, you even know that over in Dubai, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Sometimes uh, before I go to bed, I will turn on C-SPAN radio to put me to sleep, <laughs> and uh, they cover those kind of events. So the, they were covering that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, he, he kind of messed up the script. They had given him a script to read. Yeah. He'd fuck yeah. up a wet dream. Oh, speaking of which, Alex, can I combine, if we, you know, I don't know if we're bringing up Trump, but I will combine it because you, you were telling jokes yesterday. Yeah. And uh, I heard one that was dealing with the president. Can I tell it? Yes, go, go, well, go okay. ahead. Go ahead. I'm sure it's right. I'm sure yeah. it's very nice and positive about the president. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I I um you know, must say first of all, I'm independent and uh I I generally don't uh you know, go too far one way or the other when it comes to, you know, our leadership uh, cuz it anyway, so if, I, if I'm telling this right, uh, a guy says that uh, Trump is now, uh, his companies are going to sell nativity scenes because now it is okay to celebrate Christmas in the U.S. again, now that Trump is president. So he orders a nativity scene, and it arrives at his house, and there's a sticker on the front that says, we had to make some adjustments to the nativity scene. Uh, given that this is a Trump-based company. So the guy opens up the nativity scene, and uh, there's a document in there. He takes it out to read the instructions, and it says, well, we had to get rid of the Jews. We had to get rid of the Arabs. We had to get rid of anybody who looked foreign. So (laughs) here's your new nativity scene. It's a jackass with a bunch of sheep. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I I saw that on Facebook. That is clever. That's funny. I got one. Oh, you got one? Yeah. Uh, 
credited to credit words due, though. Uh, I heard it from uh, Jackie Hartling. I have no uh, idea who that is. He's, he used to be on the Howard Stern show and all that. But uh, oh, Jackie anyway, Martin. Jackie Martin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Anyhow, here it goes. What is fourteen inches long and hangs on the end of an asshole? Donald uh, Trump's tie. Yeah, I, I knew it was going to be something to do with Donald Trump. You know, <laughs> well, these are all cheap shots. And we shouldn't do that while there isn't somebody like Phil here to defend them. I don't know where Phil is tonight, but uh, well, that's his fault if he's not here. He's yeah. more than welcome to come on here. I'm sure. Yeah, right. Uh, yes, Tom. I'd like to hear what he has to say about the uh, present uh, uh, interaction between Trump and and uh, Roberts on the Supreme. Oh yeah. You know, Thank my you. reaction is that. Um, for a long time, you know, Trump has been getting away with with lying every day, and and now he's in trouble for telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I I I'm sure that 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 that, that much of the reaction is. Don't tell him that. Don't tell him that the Supreme Court justices are all our cops. <laughs> well, but Roberts was just teed off the fact that he didn't like the idea of his brethren being put down as being uh, biased, you know. And uh, human beings, of course, they're biased. Huh? But no. Uh, they're human beings, of course. They're biased. Yes, but but you, but, know. but you can still sit there and as a judge and attempt to be as magnanimous as you can. You know. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you know, and also agree to that. Uh, you know, but I I I just wish the press would have the same guts that Roberts had. Unless because, you have the same, unless you have baggage like uh, Kavanaugh and before him, uh, uh, Clarence Thomas did. Because the, the, their, the, the press their validity is, does go into question. The, the press is like a beaten wife, you know? I mean, uh -huh. uh, who thinks, uh, well, I can change him. Two you know, words, uh, media whores. Well, I'm no, uh, that's not the point, uh, Brian. The pr pr point is, is that they allow this guy to beat up on him and they take it and they keep still giving him publicity like crazy. And they should stop doing that. Just report the news about Trump when he does something that's worthy of news. Not every little petulant gripe he's got in a tweet every day, and then you spend the whole day moaning away at that. He's, it's exactly what he wants. If you ignore him, uh, he'll go crazy. It'll drive and him I'm nuts. I'm saying there's a reason why they have that nickname, and they have had that nickname for years, Me Media Ors. Well, I don't know that they're media whores. Usually media whore is, uh, is the term given to a person like Donald Trump who uses the media for publicity. That's what a media whore is by definition. Well, I've heard oh, it used oh, against oh, people oh. of the press in an episode of Married with Children. So, <laughs> Well, Married with Children does not set the, set the political tenor of the times. Yeah. Well, it was in the 90s. It was 20 years old, so, you know. They couldn't anticipate how further down the gutter that yeah. events would go 20 yeah. years after it's been off the air. Yeah, yeah. And Bree's trying to say something. So, yeah. oh, so what yeah. are you what what are you doing, Jeff? Where are you going for Thanksgiving? Are you going to stay at home? Yeah, we're going to be at home, and uh, I'm doing the turkey as I usually do. Wait a minute, you're making the turkey. Why not? Well, I don't, I'm not saying why not. My <laughs> wife won't let me, and I make a very good turkey. In fact, I used to make a turkey every year for my friends, and they would come over and have it and compliment me on how delicious it was, you know. But she doesn't think I can cook a turkey. And so far be it for me to even touch it, you know. Well, I wish I could get that ability to stay off, off the hard work. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, is there any particular spin you put on your turkey? Uh, I, yeah, I do a couple of things. First of all, I, I brine it. Yeah. So you what? Brine I it. Brine it. You put it in a, in a brine. No, we didn't say still... brine it. We said brine it. <laughs> I, I thought I heard him say brine it. That's a lot of salt. Yeah. In, in salt. water. Yeah. Okay. For how long? A, For how long? For how long? Yeah. Yeah, uh, eight eight hours. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so what does that do to the turkey? It makes it much more moisturous. Yeah. yeah. And it tastes tastes it's better. It's yeah, yeah, it's very moist. It's, you know, turkey is often dry. Yeah. Yes, so it is. This prevents this. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I understand. Especially that, the white meat. Uh, I, what we've always swore we were going to do is get ourselves one of these deep fat fryers for turkeys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd love to have deep fried turkey. Well, I mean, it's not da these things are not dangerous because they're made so you won't splatter yourself and so you won't kill yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, supposedly, what I've been told is the best turkey you'll ever have is a, fry a deep fat, a deep fat fried turkey. You know, I've heard that too. I've seen pictures of people, and videos of people doing it. Well, well, we took some turkey. We took like turkey breasts and we deep fried them just to see what it would taste like. And I'm telling you. You want to of course, talk the about, videos I've seen, they've done it outside. Yeah, what, what you, what, what, when you want to talk about moist, wow, very moist. Hello, Kevin. Kevin. We're not getting a picture of you, however, Kevin. I don't know why. Here he is. Really, you see him? Yeah, I can see him. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not seeing him yet. I, I just uh, am... Uh, yeah, it's, it's choppy or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, he's not moving. Evidently, Skype's having issues. He's Facebook moving. is try, having issues. Try, uh, try, uh, try calling in again, Brian, uh, Kevin. Would you? Oh, there he is. Well, yeah. now he's still. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah now he's moving around. Are you there? Move your hand. Move your hand. Let's see. No, you're not mm -hmm. moving. You're frozen. Huh. Looks like he's getting his beard ready for the season. Yes, it does look like he's getting his beard <laughs> ready for the season. It is. It is a time of year when he uh, gets a lot of work. Yeah. Are you there, Kevin? Can you hear? Oh, he's going to call. He's calling again. Here we go. Add to group. Okay. And add to group with Phil. Let's see. Are you there, Brian? Uh, Kevin, move. You... Kevin. Hey. Kevin's not moving. Hmm. What? Where are you? Oh, there. You're moving now. You're just kind of like a little now, and then it freezes. But. Uh, Phil, where are you? You're not, uh, we don't have a picture on you. I'm on my phone. Uh, I've tried two different computers. I rebooted my modem and my uh, thing. I did a speed test, and the thing is pinning the speed test meter. Yeah. Uh, and and it, both of the computers are saying that my uh, Skype connection is too weak. God damn, everyone's having problems. Is, Facebook has yeah. been having issues too all week. Oh well, uh, you know maybe there's something going on, uh, but I, I know that my connection is is strong. Yeah, I, I did a speed test. Well, and, you, and I tried yeah on two different computers. Well, it could be there's something wrong with Skype. I mean, uh, the other guys here don't seem to be having a problem. Kevin, a little bit of a problem, but everybody else seems yeah. to be okay. I just, yeah, uh, I just, I don't... although the, co well, no, uh, Tom's out in California and he's, he's got a good signal. So I, I yeah, I was going to say, I don't know what it is. Yeah. You know, Phil, no. if it wasn't for the cadence of your voice, you almost sound like a, you almost sound like a different person uh, other than the fact that, you know, the cadence of what you talk and whatnot is pretty much identical to how you sound when you're calling traditionally. Yeah. You almost sound like a different person to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, this is the Democratic Phil. Oh, I see. Okay, <laughs> and that I, explains the blue outline of the phone icon. Are you uh, are you using Skype to call us? Uh, no, I'm. Uh, I just I dialed the phone number. Oh, well, you you know you could use Skype to call us on your phone. Yeah, but if he gets pulled over, he doesn't. He oh, has no, to black I'm, himself I'm out he's, too. No, he's not in a car. I'm, I'm home. He's home. Oh, okay. I'm home. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess I could try that. Um, uh, let me call you back. Uh, okay. Let me see if I can do it from the computer. But for one reason or another, uh, it, it's refusing to uh, to connect me. Uh, although I did a Skype test, you know, the test yes. call, yeah. and it worked fine. Wow. Well, who knows what? The, it's, it's the Skype gods. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to fuck All right. It, uh, okay, call us right back. All right. And All right. Uh, All right. How you doing, Kevin? You getting you getting ready for the well? This is the beginning of the Christmas season, so it's employment for you, right? Yeah, I think I'm gonna back off this because I'm I might end up uh, having a little bit of surgery. I don't know. 
I've been I've been holding off on my bookings. Wait a minute. Santa is going to have surgery. Does it? Do the kids know this? No, they don't. <laughs> All kidding aside, Kevin, do you like do uh, Santa gigs as like charity things during the uh, holiday season? No, he or? makes a living out of it, Kevin. Uh, yeah. Brian, I, I actually do both. Yeah, I'll, I'll do uh, some some charity stuff, and then I do some for fact, money. You obviously fit the profile, which is you know a compliment. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, now I can't add him. Yeah, actually, oh, there he is. Uh, there I we think go. Alex has tape for that from last year. Okay. Uh, so, Phil, are you using Skype yeah. now? No, I'm, I'm using the phone again. Why? Uh, it, uh, because it says my connection's too weak on Skype. What? And it won't connect me. It says try again later. I... And you're using a wired connection on your computers? No. But uh, uh, See, that's what it was telling me, too. Yeah, are you wireless on your PC? So. Oh, really? So maybe there's something in your areas. It could be. That's a possibility. Might be because of the fires, you know. Yeah, they, probably they because could, of the rain. They could be too. By, yeah. the, yeah. by the way, the fires. I understand it's raining in California now. Is that stopping the fires, Tom? Uh, yeah, it, it's creating. Uh, uh, what do they call? I, I asked Tom. Yeah, eighty oh, percent. Oh. Yeah, eighty percent contained. Uh, the bad news is the death toll has gone up to 83 people. Oh, jeez. Yeah, and uh, there's still about 500 people missing. Yeah. Um, the, and the brakes still have no effect. Well, the rain, mostly the, the, the rain is, is making it uh, difficult to, uh, to locate uh, bodies. Uh, they've got uh, people with dogs out there, and they, they're sending uh, forensic anthropologists through there, and... Uh, the rain, of course, it makes it more difficult to do that work, but uh, but they're not they're not really expecting really much as far as mudslides. I was listening to the uh, weather forecaster uh, Bill Martin on Channel Two, and he actually grew up in Paradise, and he says that area. Well, excuse is excuse me, excuse me. It's not Paradise anymore. It's Pleasure. Oh God, yeah. Pleasure, California. I stand yeah. corrected. We yeah. we we finally looked. We finally located some family members of ours there. Oh. Are they all right? Kind of missing for a while. Yeah. Are they okay? Yeah. They made it out, but their dog did not. They lost everything. Oh, uh, shit. Wow. That's you invite them over for Thanksgiving and whatnot? Uh, did you invite Well, them? the thing is we haven't, they, they haven't been in touch with them for probably 30 years. So uh -huh. we, we, you know, kind of let them see if they're going to get a hold of us there kind of on their own they'd done their own thing and it's one of those deals where we're here if they want us and they know it so yeah one of those deals well i, I, I want to make sure they were safe phil were you touched by the fire at all anybody you knew that got burned out or whatever uh no not this time uh uh you know i Paradise is what almost two hundred miles from me. Yeah, but I mean, all and, the whole entire state was up in flames, you know. Yeah, well, uh, not exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, but, although I'm not, um, I'm not, uh, I'm not familiar with uh, any. I, I I haven't heard that anybody I know had been uh, uh, touched by it. Mm -hmm. Although I know people in uh, Hidden Hills and West Lake and those areas, and uh, I'm not sure. Uh, what their status is. The funniest video of the week was Trump. I hate to say it's the funniest of the week. Who was out in down in uh, in uh, uh, Paradise, California, seeing the uh -huh. damage to the community, and he's got Jerry Brown standing next to him, and <laughs> he starts referring to the town as Pleasure, California. Yeah. And and yeah. and and you That's, you see you they see they let he, him go twice. Well, what what's his name? Larry uh, Larry Brown, <laughs> Jerry <laughs> Brown, let him go because he figured out why correct him. It would make him look foolish and so on and so forth. But you can see he was about you know he was, he was muttering it to himself, right? You know, like it's, it's, uh -huh. it's paradise, it's paradise. And then f f Trump does it again, and I think Jerry Brown still holds his tongue. But then he does it one more time, and finally Jerry Brown says, 
it's paradise. <laughs> he had to, he had Actually, to, I think one of the reporters said something. What did you say, Phil? Phil? We lost Phil. We, oh, we can't when tell Tony, though. When uh, here comes Phil again now. Let's see here. We'll probably lose Tony. Well, wait a minute. Oh, there's Phil. Yeah, okay. This, yeah, Phil. This may not be a, a, good, uh, a good night for me. Uh, uh, it, it, no, I got news for you. It's never a good night for you, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just wanted to say that it's not paradise anymore. Y yeah. Oh, well, I mean, it, it's uh, it, 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 but I thought that, that was that was the funniest clip of the week is him calling it constantly calling it pleasure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Everybody can make a mistake. Yeah. I am so happy. By the way, everybody, I, I am so relieved that the Saudi prince isn't guilty of killing Khashoggi. I'm just so pleased to find that out from our president. So, oh, it was the Fox I, investigating that? Huh? He, he didn't have enough information uh, to draw a conclusion. I, you know, I, you should be uh, proud well, of the fact well, that he's not jumping to well, conclusions. Well, like uh, Bush did. No, he's not. There's no jumping to Phil. Phil, there's no jumping to the conclusions. The one organization that gives you all the information you need is an organization you may have heard of it called the CIA, and they say <laughs> that the that prince. The same wait a minute. That told Bush that uh, that a bomb. Was that, but wait a minute. In, they told. In, in uh, they came up with. They came out and said the prince did it. Okay, he ordered the hit. All right. And this president and won't listen to his own CIA. I think the briefing he got is a little bit different than the briefing you get from uh, MSNBC. Well, all I'm saying is the, he, he, this wasn't a briefing from MSNBC. This was a statement made by the CIA. Are you not familiar with that organization? They well, still exist. Uh, I wouldn't ask you how you spell it, but... Uh, you know, uh, where did you get the information that the CIA... The, uh, the CIA may... Uh, this, this Tom, Tom, Tom explain, and, explain it to the moron, will you please? Uh, <laughs> it was the CIA did a release saying mm -hmm. that they... Yeah. In their, yes, but go ahead. Yeah, pretty much everyone is in agreement that, uh, that the, the Saudis arranged this. And uh, Trump's... And, and Trump is, 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 hasn't denied it. He's just saying, hey, we got cheap gas now. You know? Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, the majority of our, the, the majority of our gas, the Jersey. majority of our gas, <laughs> hold on a second. The majority of um, our gas doesn't come from Saudi Arabia. No, we're self-sufficient. But Tom. No, we're not. Thinks they're all the same. Several, the difference <laughs> is the things. way Trump presented it. Many presidents have uh, overlooked these kinds of issues in the past to, for the bigger picture of national security and dealing with Iran and other other issues. This is not the first time and not the first president that's if our national okay. interest oh, over this kind on. of thing. When has a, another incident like this happened where a journalist uh, uh, working for an American paper uh, uh, is cut to pieces in an embassy under the under the, the orders of, of another country, and and we just say, oh, that's okay. That's okay because we need the well, gas. Okay. I mean, I I, 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 I'm 68 years old. Okay. Yeah. In my lifetime, I've never heard of anything equivalent, closely equivalent to Lasagna, and and. Can you come up with anything that that that, that, can, that matches yes. this? What? Tom, I can say this: that there have been other instances. They may not what? be exact. They may not be exactly the same Name as one. this. Instance. Name one, Phil. <laughs> one. Well, uh, there was a uh, in Egypt. Uh, there, Egypt. There, uh, there was, uh, you know, uh, a bunch of killings and. Uh, uh, so forth when they wait, 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 wait. Uh, well, it, 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 you're going to have to be a little more specific <laughs> than that, Phil. Yeah. 
Well, Let me go get a look, shovel. Yeah, the Egyptians, the Muslim Brotherhood. <laughs> yes, the Muslim Brotherhood took over Egypt. They they won the election. They had taken it over, and then uh, yeah, but uh, you didn't have an American president saying, "But the Muslim uh, Brotherhood's okay with us." Well, he didn't say that they're okay. What he said was he uh, instead of just burying it because. What, what mo many CIA uh, uh, spokespeople had said, retired spokespeople, had said this morning is that normally this information is not leaked out. And uh, the same basic thing that Trump did was what the other presidents did. The only difference is he was honest about it and said, look, this is what I'm doing. He was up front. Could it be? Could it be, Phil? Back. Could it be, Phil, that he's playing nice, nice with the Saudis, not because of the gasoline or because they're with us against Iran, but because he's got hotels there? I doubt yeah. it. Oh, you I doubt do. it? You <laughs> doubt it, <laughs> Phil? Yeah. No, no, Phil. no. In 2015, he said he was. He, they spent. He spent. They bought millions and millions and billions of dollars of stuff for him, and then in 2016, he said. I know nothing. I never dealt with him. Uh, look, uh, the guy <laughs> said that he has lost plenty of money being president. Well, I've and lost plenty of money from him being shit. president. <laughs> well, hey, uh, you know. Let me go Alex, get a shovel to go with his rake. <laughs> yeah, oh, shit. Alex, uh, he's he's becoming a pretty family. damn good gardener. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, got, really, he's yeah. got a lot of shit to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe you can make a fertilizer bomb. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. I forgot believe about me, that. believe Let's me, see. believe me. With all the shit you're doing, you're you're uh, uh, shoveling tonight. We could probably build a nuclear. He's got bowl. <laughs> he's got a rake. He's got a shovel. All he needs is a pickup truck. Well, yeah. I was just gonna say, Alex, considering the uh, mental caliber of many of his ardent supporters, it wouldn't surprise me if that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I would be careful talking about mental caliber. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not the one with the criminal record. <laughs> Who's got a criminal record? I sure as shit don't. I don't. I was a cop. Well, yeah. that's kind of a form of criminal. <laughs> yeah, you just wore a badge. You don't, become, you don't <laughs> become a cop for 20 years if you have a criminal record. No, you become a criminal after becoming a cop for 20 years. <laughs> or you turn a blind eye to those who've done criminal acts in the name of justice for 20 years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're uh, admitting it. I'm okay. sure you rode, you rode right next to me, and, and you saw all of the things that I did that were positive for the community. Did I? <laughs> no, I said... You know, uh, what's his name uh, in Pittsburgh? The guy that lives in Pittsburgh. I saw him, but he didn't get paid. I Brian. Yeah. You know, uh, he he's he's intimating that I have a criminal record. And uh, I, it doesn't sit well. No, he didn't intimate that you had a criminal record. I think you said he had a criminal record. But you're, but you're being terribly, oh, no, 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 but you're, no. being ter said, you're being terribly defensive. <laughs> yeah. That and yeah. he was the first one to throw the first punch, animating that I'm insane. So you know. Well, oh, okay. Well, yeah. Now that the ball's been spiked in your court, you seem to have a hell of a time spiking it back to me. Well, I don't have to spike it back to you. You just have to be on your meds. <laughs> so now we're making fun of people who take medications. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Seems seeing as to how there's a lot of Americans who do so. Some people well, hey, are... Uh, 50, 50 million flies love shit. You know, they can't be wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you talk about a shovel, Kevin. He's digging himself deeper in it. God you damn. know something? We he's really got to get his video back because he, he, oh he he's, yeah. he's, 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 he's 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 like he's flying blind tonight. <laughs> What are you That's doing? True. <laughs> I, hey, I don't understand what's going on with this thing. Uh, I've rebooted. I've done all sorts of stuff. Well, and, well, Kevin. Uh, Kevin says he's having the. He, Kevin says he's having the same problem. So it, it could. Yeah, it's gone now. Does it say there. Kevin? Does it say his connection is weak? They 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 ran my background check. I'm 
<clears throat> Good. Must be a California thing that's going on. Who knows? It, yeah. It's working fine now, I think. Hey, you're a little grainy, but you're otherwise all right, Kevin. But, yeah, it must, must be a California thing. The next thing is two week. Try again later. Huh. So maybe if you uh, send an email to the president. We'll fix it. Have you tr you try you try you, you, uh, have you just tried your have you tr have you tried to get on Skype uh, using your uh, your uh, your computer right now? It might be better. Yeah, I'm trying it. I'm trying it, uh, but it's uh, that one's giving me the thing. It says it's too weak. I have a laptop. Let me try that one. Well, you don't uh, know. You know what you that, should do. What you should do. You should check and make sure that your machine. Um, I don't know. I guess it, it should be okay. Is is uh, is is maybe not using Wi-Fi, but is using the Ethernet. Uh, uh, no, I don't have a cable that goes to the Ethernet. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Well, it's in another room. But I did test. <laughs> I did speed test, and uh, it said I was like one thirty-five and uh, uh, down and thirty something up. That should be fine. Oh, it should be very fine. Did you try and, uh, re and you try rebooting your your Skype, right? Yes. Are you using the new Skype or the old Skype? The new Skype. Oh, maybe that's the problem. I'm using the new okay. Skype. Oh, really? I'm using the new one. Yeah, yeah, I'm using the new Skype. Hmm. You know, I'm using uh, the there new were, Skype. There, there were power outages today, uh, uh, in, in, all over the place. Uh, because it's raining here, and this is the first rain we've had in a while. And uh, yeah, but if if it says that your bandwidth is good, uh, you know, I mean, it could be something with the new Skype. You know, the new Skype has been known to fuck up. Uh, Question: Who's yeah. using the new Skype with the PC versus a Mac? Uh, he's using a Mac. What are you using, uh, Tom? Mac. Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me try the speed test. Well, no, the speed uh, test. I'm sure the speed test says you're fine. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. and and you didn't yeah. you didn't reboot uh, Skype. You didn't completely unload it and then reload it again. Uh, yeah, I did. I even rebooted the computer. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, and I rebooted the modem and I rebooted the uh, the, the router. Cool. Wow, that's very weird. I you know I mean I'm I I would blame Skype actually. That it's something yeah. that has to do with Skype, you know. Yeah. But well, the, this is not helping the show, uh, you know. Oh yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, it is. It makes it harder for you to argue with us. It's like your voice from being. Yeah. Now, now, now Bree's uh, in Dubai, Dubai, and he's getting us perfectly, right, Bree? Oh, well, he has. He's muted. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Yeah. yeah. See. Yeah. Yeah, so he's fine. So, you know, what I suggest, yeah. Phil, is you get on a plane and you go to Dubai and plug your machine in. Spout <laughs> some uh, of your you Trump know, nonsense very, when you get over there, too, and see what happens. Huh? On the way back from Tennessee, I <laughs> sat next to a woman that uh, lives, an American woman that lives in Oman. And she also lives in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, she it was she was very interesting. She was saying she was giving me her perspective on Dubai as a woman, and also raising two male sons that were you know, seventeen and sixteen, mm -hmm. and uh, and how they uh, perceive the treatment of women in in Dubai, and uh, you know uh, basically women are are discounted. They don't have the same uh, uh, you know they're, yeah. they're not respected. Yeah. They're getting confused with Oman and Dubai, I think. Well, she's in both places. Uh, her, uh, her her husband lives uh, lives there too, and she had two kids that she's been bringing up there, and she had just brought them back to Tennessee to go to a an American school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was her name? Uh, what, was, what was her first name? Um, let me look at her card. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about wait, 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 hold on. the muscat. What's it? What? Her what? name is uh, Rachel. Okay, so let uh, me Rachel. let me say let me say this. I'm going to do this to Bree because this is what people always do when they find out. Oh, she's from Dubai. 
Bree, do you know Rachel? <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that. Yeah, people would do that. To, does, whenever um, I'd say I was from San Francisco, they'd say, oh, I know a person named Bob so-and-so. You know, do you know him? And I'm going, San yeah, Francisco well, is a I'm very sure, big I'm town. Sure he, I'm sure he does. And if, and if he saw her, uh, she would, uh, he would uh, not forget. Yeah. Um, yeah, she was coming back also to the States to hawk her new book. Uh, Callie and me. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, here, look up her website. Uh, no, I don't want. I have better Rachel things to do. Time. I have better things to do <laughs> so, in my life, Phil, than look up a website of some woman you met on a fucking airplane. Oh yeah, you're going somewhere wrong. <laughs> I have a. I, I'm busy here. I have a show to do. I have a, a, a network to run. Uh, well, I have. Of, I have a career like to pursue. What? She looks like one of those women on Fox. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, connect with Rachel. Yeah. What? So she looks Aryan. Uh, Rachel Aryan. Huh? Uh, uh, Rachel R A C H E L. So it's connect C O N N E C T W I T H R A C H E L dot com. Yeah. Well, now that you just bored the shit out of all of us. <laughs> well, I don't know. Take a look. Oh. Well, I'm not going to go over there. I've got a show to do here. <laughs> all right. Well, you were the one who gave me a hard time. Hey, do you know what she, you know, do you know uh, Rachel? From uh, it, it was a joke. I, all I wanted was her first name so I could do oh, the Martin, joke. Eddie. So I could do the joke with Bree about, do you know Rachel in Dubai? Well, now he does. He just said his her last name. By the way, Rachel's a Jewish name. Hey, what is she doing? Man? Not Obr not O'Brien. Well, I mean, she may have married <laughs> a guy named O'Brien, but you know, Rachel is Rockle, actually. Right? Yeah. Am I right, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very Jewish name. Rachel oh. is probably one of the most oh. Jewish names you can have. Yeah. So, what was your Jewish name? Asshole. I, I know that. <laughs> is, uh, At least that's what they like to call me in school. You know, life is not the journey, not the destination. Right. Well, my, actually, my uh, my uh, my nickname was actually uh, uh, Bolo for Boleslav. Was that the name they gave you when you were bar mitzvah? No, no, no. It was Bennett. They said, "What kind of an?" It was, uh, my parents gave me a very Anglo name. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like I got a really Jewish name, like Jeff. No. You know, mm -hmm. I mean Jeff Stein. Yeah, how Jewish a can more website, Jewish can you get than and, that? Um, huh? What were you gonna say, uh, 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 Bree? Bree. I'm looking at the site, and uh, yeah, this is not someone who would uh, sort of understand the local culture. She's a success coach kind of a thing. So this is this is kind of a very Western notion. So coming in with that idea, you're definitely going to be seeing the world through different, uh, you know, colored glasses. Yeah, uh, well, so yeah absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, so. uh, yeah, she said she'd call into the show one of these days, and I said, yeah, we get somebody else from Dubai that calls in. And uh, she's very interesting gal. Yeah. Uh huh. Well. Okay. Well, this, yeah. I mean, you know, when I see this kind of a website, this is um, I don't know how to explain it. That there, it's like a success porn. You know, like go with success <laughs> to be successful. And you know, uh, one of the quotes on our website is derivative it's you know something like success is not the destination it's a journey or, you know something like that that's yeah. it's yeah. a little bit to me that's just cheesy I, but you know i'm sure you know i'm not oh, making any judgment yeah. about the person i'm just saying that kind of thing does not appeal to me because look i'm successful but i don't have to shout on the mountaintops a lot of times what those people are is basically uh you know they figured out and alex you and i know well, I, I see her page here. It's like infinite success with Rachel, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, if she anyway, put it down like that, she's not going to want to call in. <laughs> yeah, she's a very interesting person. And it was interesting to get her take on it, living there as an American 
uh, for I, oh, I but but it, but it, but 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 Bree's take on it isn't interesting. No, Bree's take on it is is a take from from a man's point of view, and she was giving me her take from a female's point of view, raising no. two sons. Uh, in in uh, you know, Phil, you you assume that because I'm male, that that's the only perspective I could have. But I, I would I'd say that's bunk. I mean, I do sociological. Ethno, you know, research, and it requires me to take the perspective of everyone. So, okay. you know, I, I, disagree, I disagree with what you're saying. I mean, if you want me to talk about it from a, an American male perspective, I can do that. But one of the things when you come and live in a different culture is to get outside of that view. It, it, uh, let me oh, tell you okay. something. You, you, yeah. If you're going to go out as an American male, you're not going to last very long in this world, Okay. Uh, you will if you're very wealthy and rich and you're a successful coach and you can just, you can stay away from local people essentially and tell them you're better and they should follow your way. You might last a while, but you're not going to last well, five, six, I, seven years. I asked her if she wore a headscarf or any of those other things. She said no. Uh, uh, but, um, you know, uh, it was uh, – she said that um, you know, her, her boys – we're, we're taught to respect women and that uh, they uh, some of the things that they saw go on, uh, uh, you know, made them question uh, how how life was there. And yeah, because uh, that never like, happens in space. It, it never was because for sure you'd never see that in the United States. Give me a break. Oh, uh, OK. Alex would call that a what about is but, uh, no, that isn't a the, whataboutism. The, That's an observation that she's making a comment about what goes on in uh, in Dubai. Well, I, but nevertheless, I, there is yeah. a chauvinism in America that is comparable to that. That's what about America? Okay. No, I, we're, we're, no, that's a comparison. That is not a whataboutism. Well, every whataboutism is a comparison. No, it isn't. Oh, not necessarily. Oh. When you bring... What about that has nothing to do with it? When you're, what about. When, when you're saying that it's okay, somebody did something and you go, well, what about so-and-so who did it? You're trying to compare. You're not trying to compare. You're not trying to compare well, two cultures. I, I, am, I am trying I am trying to relate her experience living. Uh, this is a woman you met country. on a fucking airplane. You're doing 20 minutes on her. All of a sudden, you know, <laughs> all of a sudden, you you have a whole new perspective on Dubai because of twenty, you know, sitting next to a woman who probably wished you would have shut up. <laughs> uh, Show you this you know, look perfect in the time. Well, yes, so it, it, yes, it, yes Brian has his, his hand. You can't, you can't see this. Brian has his hand up. Yeah, uh, dovetails with the earlier uh, exchange that. Uh, um, Mr. Phil and I had earlier concerning uh, my views on the police. Mm -hmm. Well, it, my, I would have exponentially more respect for them if two, one of two things happened. One, your mm -hmm. your people were held to the same standards as the civilians they go after, justice wise. Or, or two, or two. Let me finish. Or two, as I read before somebody else's opinion, somebody educated and whatnot, if there were a UCMJ kind of paradigm, a un uniform code of military justice paradigm adopted to the police force nationwide. Well, let me, let me say this, and I can only speak for California. Uh, do you know that if a police officer is accused of, uh, of domestic violence, that uh, his gun is taken away, his job is suspended, and uh, uh, they can't, he can't work. If a police officer gets a DUI, uh, he can't work. Pretty much his career is over. Uh, and the same, uh, you know, uh, do they hold uh, regular people to that same standard? Well, I think no. that, I think, no, I think, I think that what, I think that what Brian is, is saying here, and he's quite correct about a uniform code of justice is that that may be true in California, which is a very progressive state, and certainly doesn't countenance police having... Don't forget this. Is, this is on paper. Well, wait a minute. Wait, 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 let, me, let, me, let me finish what I'm saying. Let me finish what I'm saying. 
But what right. I think that he's also trying to say, oh, now we can see uh, 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 our friend in Dubai, Bree. Uh, anyway, the, 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 the point is, is that some other jurisdictions don't have the same rules, Phil. Uh, I'm not aware of those. Well, and of course I, you're not I've aware of those, but but I'm sure if you went into some of those southern uh, parishes oh, and so on, you would find the police can go out and drive drunk while they're on duty, for crying out loud. As you've seen yourself uh, firsthand, I, I, I Alex, in Texas. Yes. I seriously doubt that in this century oh, you doubt it. That, you know. that, that that would be allowed. No, it happened. You, you doubt it, but it's it, but it's yeah. true, Phil. You don't know those some of those some of those uh, those police departments down there and sheriff's departments are terrible, just terrible. Uh, I'm sure that there's uh, there's issues in in every state and in every city, but uh, <clears throat> all the more reason why we need a UCPJ Uniform Code of Police Justice. Yeah. By the way, you know, you can turn that, if you, if you turn that, uh, your phone uh, sideways, Bree, we can kind of get the landscape view rather than the portrait view. Well, wait a minute. What happens if hey, you know something? Wait a minute. Hold, hold on a second. Your Nokia doesn't change right. orientation. There's an app that'll let you, that'll force it to change orientation. Oh, okay. There, there are apps that'll do that. No, you, it won't. It's not doing it. It's not yeah, doing it. Just, they have to look at you this way, you know. Hey, uh, uh, Alex, yeah. I have Skype on my phone. I'm going to try that one. I'll call you right back. Oh, okay. Oh, good, yeah. good. Phil Phil will call us now. We'll get to see him. You turn yourself back the other way, Bree. It's, yeah. it, it, it doesn't work. But... Well, Alex, I have to say that um, my generally, I, I really try to understand the, you know, the situation where I live. And uh, I don't make generalizations about them. I, I can understand if you're on a plane, you want to make small talk, and you have some anecdotal evidence and incidences that are interesting to relate. Everybody does that. There's no problem with that. It's when you try to say that that's a blanket reality for the entire place, then that's where you, you know I have to say something because that's. Uh, so I don't think she did that. I think Phil was doing that. Right. Of course. This is Phil we're talking about. You can be as brutal as you want. Yeah. He's a yeah. punching bag. Here we go. Now we'll probably be able to see Phil. There we go. Now we can see yeah. him. You see? There we go. You're using the Skype on your phone, right? Yes. As am I, to an extent. Yeah. yeah. Now we can see him. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Talk about it. Well, I can see you, so I won't talk over you. Mm -hmm. like anyway, uh, so uh, tomorrow is uh, Thanksgiving. Turkey Day. And it's Turkey Day, and I love Thanksgiving. It's the only holiday I really like because it doesn't require anything of you but to have a, a, an empty stomach. It's non-materialistic. I will give it's, you that. It's That's not, why I like the holiday. It's not materialistic. It's not materialistic until Friday. Yeah, oh, God. And, and then well, that, I like it because it travels well. Uh, well. It does travel well. I was mentioning that uh, to who today? I think I was t uh, talking to uh, 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 Stephen Pearl and saying that that you know, it's our, huh? It's our consumers' culture that made Black Friday Black Friday, though. Oh yeah, talking but, about Black Friday. I was White uh, Friday. It's White I Friday and Yellow to, Friday here. Yeah, I had to get two sweet potato pies. For, uh, for going over to my friend's house tomorrow, I, I said he said I want pie. I said what kind? He said sweet potato. There isn't a lot of places that have sweet potato <laughs> pies, except if you go into Oakland yeah. off of uh, off of Shattuck in, a, in an area where I was the only white person. Oh, yeah. in the whole neighborhood. You can get sweet potato pie there like crazy. By the way, don't eat any of that sweet potato pie because the angle you have on yourself right now is so unflattering. It makes you look like Job of the Hut. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Well, the risk is uh, Yeah. It's not as comfortable. Yeah. Right. And what was that? Uber. I'll, I'll Wait, uh, yeah. uh, Uber Eats. I the whole movie away. The biggest scam in the world. Don't but no. Work, anyway, though. so I was saying that I just I love I uh, yeah. There you go. What is that? How how you can order turkeys and stuff, uh, Bree, in Dubai. You know what we did, Alex? No, this is our that's our Amazon. That's your Amazon. Anyway, uh, and it used to be independent. Now it's owned by Amazon. 
Oh, well, Amazon uh, uh, today. My condolences. Oh, by the way, today they're, Amazon. Their building is right there. A Am they bought this building next to me. Amazon and is. And they made the lobby. Like, oh. He's buying everything. Well, the thing that, that, uh, that happened with me with Amazon today was I was looking around and I saw some movies they had. So I clicked and it said, uh, join Amazon Prime. And I clicked on it because I'm already a member of Amazon Prime. But I'm mm. a secondary uh, uh, member. I use Shecky's account so i can't like sign on to stuff and i didn't realize that and it signed me up for amazon prime yeah, uh, but not but card? not but not at 190 19 dollars a year but at 14.95 a month and oh, so i got a i got a message from them immediately called amazon i said what the fuck is this and they they took it off you know but i mean but anyway the point i'm making is is that i love i love thanksgiving because it is, as you say, Bree, uh, it you can celebrate it anywhere. It's, it has a universal appeal, uh, and uh, I guess it would be offensive to people who have nothing to be thankful for. But uh, what is that noise? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute. Oh, Bree, you're driving us nuts. The audio. <laughs> Giving us a show. Uh, uh, there what we Dubai go. Looks like. well, There's Dubai, but the problem is, is that yeah, the audio. Yeah, I'm out on my patio now. Yeah. Now, what is that building straight ahead? Uh, you can't see the Burj Khalifa from there, can you? <laughs> Bree. Oh well. <laughs> no, I go up on my roof. You can. Yeah. And the Burj Khalifa. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. they got some great buildings there. Anyway. Yeah, and I'm sorry about that. I should have moved. Them. Yeah, yeah. The problem is, is that you're uh, you, you've got a you've got a problem with your uh, uh, with your bandwidth when you get out there on the uh, patio. Where are you, where are you going? Where's he going? He's, uh, I just thought it was funny. He was saying, yeah, yellow fort could not just Black Friday, but yellow Friday or white Friday. Yeah, and I'm thinking white to myself, Friday and yellow Friday. But, Bree, I'm thinking to myself, um, it's to be honest, it's buy otherwise overpriced shit you don't need for people you can't stand Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yes, yes, Tom. For me, there we go. Big day. Wait a minute. I bought you universal truth. There's your universal truth right there. Yeah, buy nothing day this Friday. Yeah, and I much observe that every Friday after Thanksgiving, buy nothing. And uh, REI is going to be closed. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Bree, Bree, wait a minute, hold on a second. Bree, would you turn? Would you? Yeah. Mute, would you mute your camera because the traffic noise is too loud? And don't yeah. turn yourself uh, that way because somehow your f phone doesn't reorient itself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then when you want to talk, uh, go inside and, you know, and... Uh, but again, there are apps. If he's using an yeah. Android-based phone, there are apps that will force the phone into uh, another orientation. Oh, okay. Anyway. And, uh, anyway let's, not that orientation. Let's back to, get back to what we were talking about. So uh, I love Thanksgiving because of, of just the nature of the holiday. It only requires that you eat and that you enjoy the company you're with. And uh, I always tell people, hey, you know... If you know somebody that has no place to go, that's the time of year to invite them over to your house to have. Uh, I used to do it all the time. I used to invite a lot of comics who were in San Francisco, mm. but they were a long way from home to come over to my place, and we all had Thanksgiving dinner. And this year I even asked John Rockwell if he wanted to come over because he had no place to go, but he found something he, he was going to do. Uh, mm. But I, got I just. got a better deal? Yeah, I got a better deal. Uh, but but I I really like the holiday for that reason and and uh, 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 but the thing that ruins it for me is the next day that whole Black Friday bullshit you know I want to like Thanksgiving more than I do anyhow but there's two things that ruin it for me one is Black Friday the other of course is the sordid origin of the Thanksgiving uh, day what what do you mean the sordid origin. Massacre Native Americans? No, that wasn't massacring you Native Americans. They sat down with the Native Americans and had a Thanksgiving dinner. And by the way, the Indians did pretty well 
in their job of massacring the uh, the, uh, the the British when they, they came did in. so in retaliation, yeah. Yeah, among yeah. which includes, according to many, the introduction to the white community of syphilis. No, you're wrong. Oh, it's, it's up for debate. There's... You're wrong. No, it's not up for debate. Yeah, Syphilis is. existed long before the white man came here. It was here. I will give you that. They, they, the Indians did have syphilis, and they don't know how or why. It was probably given to them by white men while they were still on the other side of the Bering Strait. But the fact is that... Uh, that you can syph- only conjecture. Syphilis, syphilis uh, uh, precursors, the first cases of syphilis in Europe... Uh, came about a few years before Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Imagine Columbus brought it over. No, no, he didn't. Right. He used condoms. He probably made a sheepskin or. But the fact of the matter was that the uh, the Indians uh, they got their comeuppance there. They they did pretty good when they started fighting the British because the British didn't know how to fight them because they. They hid behind trees and shot at them, and that was not considered proper in the fighting. Yeah. You know, and the British would just march along. Sell, you don't fight to be proper. Manager, you fight to fucking win. You, what, what were you saying, Phil? Their business manager had them sell Manhattan Island for $24. It wasn't a good deal. No, it wasn't even $24. It was $24 it's worth beads. of beads. Yeah. And you know something? It was a very good deal. Have you seen <laughs> Manhattan? For who? Huh? Have you seen Manhattan? You know, yeah. This uber-infested, lift-infested island that we live on? Uh, you know, there is too much Uber and Lyft. Yeah. Yes, uh, P- T- Tony wanted to say something. Yes, Tony. Oh, I forgot what I wanted to say. Oh, God. <laughs> I did, really. First time he had a thought in 20 years, and then he forgot it. Jeez <laughs> almighty. <laughs> Hey, anybody know how to remove a program on a Mac? Uh, you don't go to system preferences, do you? No, you just take it and drag it down to the garbage. Yeah. Uh, in Finder, from Finder? Yeah. Okay. You yeah. just drag it in the garbage. Because I'm virus. Because okay, I'm going to reinstall Skype on this computer and see if that makes I it. I don't think that'll do anything. No? Uh, no. Is anybody I, buying Bitcoin? What? Uh, not a good deal anymore, huh? That was an investment, right? Not a, yeah, it's it's it, uh, it's it, so saturated you can't even tell which is a, the idea of digital money is not a bad idea, but the fact is that when you have it in an unregulated atmosphere, uh, it becomes a problem. Didn't the guy who I, I had a woman Bitcoin from Hong sell- Kong who said now is the time to buy. Really? The only but, problem is which one do you buy? Didn't the guy who invented Bitcoin sell off a whole bunch of it uh, about four months ago? I believe so, yeah. 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 When, you when want to ask? Was, well, what, when, when, wait a minute, Bree? So, Bree, did you want to say something? Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that usually always occurs. Uh, that You know, anybody who has a company that, uh, you know, does very well, eventually they sell off parts of it because they want to diversify. They don't want all the eggs in the one basket. So I, I can understand that. No, but, I think uh, he just got rid of Bitcoin. That, that's who? what the thing was. It wasn't that he got rid of his investment in the company. He got rid of Bitcoin that he owned. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and, it's, and it was uh, interesting that it happened just before the Bitcoin uh, hit the dumper. You uh, know, I... A lot I, of stocks I, hit the I, dumper. I, I, so I, like, I, that, that's part of it. I still... still uh, I, I am still kind of in a... In a Point, at a point where I don't understand what the fuck Bitcoin is. I you, never did. You, you know, where? how do you buy it? Uh, okay, all right, but how do you buy it? Uh, and how do you trade it? And how do you use it? And uh, uh, how do you cash it in? Well, How do you some, cash it some, in? It's kind of like... Uh, well, well, wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, Bree seems to know more about this than any of us. Uh, no, yeah. Go ahead. Phil, Phil was going to say something. Yeah. Go ahead, Phil. Yeah, well, basically, I was just going to say, if you want to know how to buy it, all you do is allow somebody to hack your computer, hold it hostage, and they'll tell you what you need to do. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but what were you going to say, Bree? What were you going to say? I'm, I, I, uh, I have a uh, poor connection. Am I, sorry about that. 
No, you know, it's funny. I have a router in this room as well, but it never connects to that. It always connects to the one in the front. You know uh, something, though? Some your picture, know your picture looks fine, and your <clears throat> audio sounds great. So oh, okay. I, yeah, so. Um, well, what you... <clears throat> There, there are different ways you can buy it, but it's basically, it's kind of like buying a stock, but you have to go to a certain broker to get it. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the, one of the places is called Coinbase. Uh, you know, and through through Coinbase, you set up an account, and you can buy through there. Yeah. You basically create a Bitcoin wallet, uh, and then you you can trade, like kind of like a stock. Yeah. Sounds a little too chancy for me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't hear anything. I I don't know if you guys can hear me or see me, but uh, we can hear you. We I can just hear have you. a bad connection. We can hear yeah. you. We can hear you. Um, but I, I yeah, anyway, getting back to Thanksgiving, getting back to Black Friday, I just find that to be so disgusting, so vile. Uh, you Matt, know, and, and I can't see, see the, you, and the I can't YouTubes. see YouTube's. Of people fighting. Yeah, well, I can't see why anybody would go to that extent to 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 uh, be there on the first day. To begin with, you know when the best bargains are? The 24th. When they're trying to sell off everything. No, the 26th. Yeah. Well, the 26th, yeah. yeah, it gets really good. You know when it gets even better? When you get into January. They have mm -hmm. to get rid, at least in New York, they have to get rid of all the merchandise on their shelves because anything that's left there is taxed. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they are out to sell everything in January. So if you've got somebody like, and, and you know them really well, you go, look, I'm going to get you this thing, but I'm going to wait till January to get it because it's a high priced item. And that's the answer, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I just, and I hate Christmas. I mean, maybe it's the Jewish in me that hates Christmas, but I just find it just a fucking, just rancid holiday. Yes, uh, yes, Tom. You know what even makes even less sense to me than Black Friday is Cyber Monday. I mean, I can imagine a time when it might have made sense when people only had high speed connections at work and they had to wait to get back to work in order to go online shopping. Yeah. yeah. Now you can go shopping anytime. So so it's just a, a, a it's just a, a phony sales event. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Basically it's it a phony doesn't make any sense. It, yeah, it's a phony sales event. Yeah. yeah. But uh uh you know, I mean uh I mean, I find that with Amazon, I get deals all year long on various things from time to time, you know. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I just, uh, but the fact that you have a holiday where you're forced to buy gifts for people, you know. Are you forced to buy gifts for people? <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, hey, Alex, my really? my wife, my dear wife, will say to me, welcome. "So what, what? What? Let's let's decide on a limit of how much money we're going to spend." And mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I give you a list of stuff I want. You can give me a list you want. And I'm going, what? Why? Why? You know, every hey, day Alex. is Christmas for you, dear. You know, well, she doesn't look at you. she doesn't look at it that way, but I do. What? Yeah. What do you got against celebrating uh, the birth of Christ? And, and uh, you know, so, you know, you, you hate Christmas? Well, I would, I'll, celebra celebrating I'll, I'll celebrate the birth of Christ. Just let me know what day it is in March. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, because he wasn't born on the 25th of December. And celebrate it in a way that wasn't appropriated by the, by the pagans either. Yeah. Or Hallmark. Yeah, we are. It is the it, we are celebrating the birth of our Lord by going to Macy's and trampling other human beings asunder while we try and get that. That's American Christianity in a nutshell, isn't it? That, that fucking new doll de jour that's out, you know. I'll never forget one Christmas. My mother couldn't get me the Thor doll, like an action figure. I was like, my brother says you were destroyed. I was looking for it. She's like, I couldn't find it. It was sold out. I thought it was still sad it was. The Thor doll? Yeah, it was, she tried to get it out of there. So after my brother says, 
I opened all the presents, Damn. and it wasn't there. I said, Santa didn't get me my Thor yeah. figure. Yeah. He says, well, you can't get everything. I said, the one thing I wanted, I said. Oh. He said, he was laughing. He said, because I still believe. You and know? you still want so a Thor doll, like, right? It, would, we had to take him to Alexander's in January. And, and, and if I got you a Thor doll now, you'd be happy. I probably would be, because I still wanted it from the early. Yeah. And it's hard to get, because he wasn't popular, really, I guess. But, Tony, there yeah. is a Santa He's in the circle right next to you on my uh, uh, on my uh, phone. Oh, okay. there's Santa. Yeah. So if if there's really a Santa, well, there must be. Christmas. Let me find out why why Don't Santa. Don't talk shit, Tony. <laughs> what I want to know from Santa, Kevin, is you were saying that this year you might not be doing the Santa because of the foot. Is the foot going to have to be operated on, or or uh, what? No, they're talking about doing an injection in my back to kill the pain in my legs. Oh, Damn. epidural! Marjorie gets yeah. Marjorie gets those about twice a year for her yeah, back. Yeah, well, I'm mm. fighting them. They wanted to put a device in my back, mm. and they decided not to because the MRI showed it some disc bulging or something. So I then they wanted to do some other crap. So I'm yeah fighting them on it. Yeah. Mm. So maybe maybe so. maybe uh, Jack Bishop will have to. Uh, 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 be Santa. Be Santa this year. Yeah. Yeah. Next week, I'm talking to her about it, but I, I'm thinking I'm telling her that I'm going to hold off and uh, uh, Kevin, probably not. Uh, do it. I, uh, I have a friend that is going through that same thing with the device in the back and so forth. I'll send you his contact information, and he's done a lot of research. Maybe you can talk to him about it. <clears throat> yeah. He, yeah. He decided not to do it. Okay. Jack has his hand up. Yes, Jack. Hey, I heard you guys talking about being forced to give gifts uh, during the holidays, I, uh, I want to add one. I refuse to celebrate Kwanzaa because I don't believe in celebrating any quasi-religious holiday that's younger than I am. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely <laughs> correct. You're absolutely correct. That is a, a completely made-up holiday. Uh, you know, I don't know why people feel they have Aren't to... Aren't they all? Yes, exactly. Thank you. Is there no festivals? Yeah, but when it's made up in your own lifetime. Look, Is there no festivals? When I can pinpoint the year I first heard about Kwanzaa, not only is that bullshit, that is bull bullshit. Well, well uh, yes, Tom. It's so dope. I even met the creator one time. Oh, really? Ron Frega. I wonder how he came up with it. Yeah, down didn't it originate in Oakland or something? No, he's down in Southern California. Oh, so is Earth Day, though. Do you celebrate that? I think he was from Orange County. Ooh. Well, I don't know why, you know, all of a sudden the blacks decided they needed a Christmas. You know? Well, why the hell not? When it came along, we had our own, uh, our own schools and our own restaurants and shit like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just stayed to the same name. People to tell us... <laughs> What, what to celebrate? Now, now Alex knows this because he and I have actually talked about this years ago. Uh, I have a um, uh, a thing that is um, very negative towards Christianity because for so long it was used as a way to keep black people uh, satisfied. You know, don't don't try to change anything right now. Wait for that pie in the sky when you die. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 really? Uh, uh, by the way, uh, 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 Bree said goodbye to everybody, if you noticed him waving goodbye. I thought uh, he was agreeing with me. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye uh, uh, Dubai? Uh, you know, I mean, I think that, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 just, I just dislike Christmas because it's just a hustle, you know? It's just been turned into this commercial hustle. If it were a religious holiday and people celebrated it in a religious way, I would have nothing against it. But they have robbed everything that might have possibly been good about that holiday out of it, you know? And, mm -hmm. and um, it, it's just the pressure that it puts everybody under. It's, it's, it's a terribly pressure-filled holiday. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's why I like Thanksgiving. It's something we can all do, you know? Yeah. Now, I had a buddy who was a Cherokee Indian who was dead set against Thanksgiving and Columbus Day. He said, what do, what do we Native Americans have any reason to celebrate Thanksgiving or Columbus Day? 
You know, we showed you folks, you European folks, because, how to survive. Because here's why. Here's yeah, here's why you're. That's here's why you're. That here's, why you're here's why your Cherokee friend is an idiot. Uh, <laughs> Thanksgiving as a holiday is simply about a holiday of giving thanks. Forget all that stuff about the pilgrims and that it was the you know the first Thanksgiving was the you know. The, forget about the forget all words, that. In other, words. in other words, you have to just think about the spirit of the holiday and the spirit of Thanksgiving has somehow never been eroded. It's never been eroded by any even modicum of commerciality. And and that's what I like about it. so fuck the Cherokee Indians. I would huh. disagree with you, Alex. <laughs> what? It has been eroded. Fuck the Jews when they got gassed. Uh, uh, Thanksgiving has been eroded by a thing called football and television. No, football yeah. football is not on Thanksgiving, is it? Is there a yeah, game on Thanksgiving? Of games. Yeah. All day. All, All day. world he lives in, right, guys? All day long. Yeah. It, yeah. It's so... <laughs> And so Fuck is the Irish the, for having so much cheese. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Tom. And so is the Macy's parade. So that's a long time uh, well, piece of, of the Macy's parade may be fun to watch tomorrow because it's going to be so windy here they may not be able to do the balloons. If they if it's more than thirty four knots, they said they have to secure the balloons down or the floats. Uh, they have to secure them down uh, and they won't move. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and you know what else is is uh, helium degrades in low temperatures. So if it gets too cold, that helium is going to degrade, and it may, they may sink. Uh, it it's also going to be what twenty seven degrees or no? Yeah, it's nineteen. It gets that low, 19. they could switch 19. back to nitrogen, and we could have another uh, Hindenburg on our hands. Nitrogen will just That's, sink. That would be entertaining. Uh, Wouldn't that be funny if they had a Hind nitrogen, they had a Hindenburg right? balloon and no, they went by and just sink? It won't even the flames. Yeah. Oh, really? I was hoping to hear the words, oh, the humanity again. Oh, you're thinking of hydrogen now. Hydrogen would be more exciting. Okay, yeah, you're right. I'm That's sorry. Flammable. I misspoke. I agree, I agree. I agree. the uh, baby Trump balloon up, so why the hell should anybody but Phil on this panel watch it? Yeah, what, what, uh, what? I, I reinstalled Skype fresh, yeah. uh, the, eliminated the other one, and it did the same thing. Gave yeah. me the same error. I message. told you it would. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Well, try try and go find uh, um, Skype Seven and reinstall it, you know. Yeah, and and see if what what how Skype I think Seven. It's just works. a one night problem. You'll be fine tomorrow. I think it is a yeah. one night yeah. problem. Yeah, 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 I got a feeling it is. But mine uh, cleared up. Yeah, they keep trying to trick me into in, to, into installing the new one, and I and I keep saying no. Uh, all right, do you have a PC or a Mac? PC. I was gonna say because when you inst if you install the new one. Don't do what I did. I, oh, it was just done out of intellectual curiosity. You can mute people, but everyone else won't be able to hear them, hear them either. Oh. This could be a good thing. I'm, I haven't installed it. Mac 8. Skype has been working fine for six months or whatever it is. It's been Skype 8? Yeah, said. never had a problem. The only problem I have with it is is the way it would look on the screen. Yeah, which, well, you're doing it from a different angle. Uh, I'm doing it, it from doesn't a, bother me. You know, so I'm uh, I'm holding off until I absolutely have to. Yeah. Uh, there, Maybe they hey, fixed it. Question, like, um, Alex, have you have you watched the uh, the front line? Um, I guess it's not a documentary. I guess you'd call, it, but it was on Facebook. Yeah. On PBS. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. That was pretty good. Well, I mean, uh, Facebook. I think we're seeing the end of Facebook. Yeah, it wasn't. I saw it today. I watched it all the way through. I recorded. unless they get rid of Fuckerberg so they can reinvent themselves. I hope that. I do hope that happens. Well, no, I don't think uh, getting rid of him is going to solve the problem. To be honest, no. with you. I don't think no. he's the problem. I think the There's problem a trust is issue now. it's the whole culture at Facebook that somehow didn't think of themselves as having a responsibility. Hi, Ray. Oh, clean house, then. Hi, Ray. Hey. Ray's just jumping in at the last minute. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Same to you. That's why I called. I wanted to say happy Thanksgiving. What have you been up to? Because you haven't been called tonight. And, uh... I was at the gym. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. I've never stopped you before. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I was like doing uh, box boxing. 
kickboxing. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Are you getting inspired because of John Parolis? Yeah, I went back, but I'm not going to spar. I'm just uh, going to hit the bags and stuff. Yeah. 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 I worked out today, too. I did. did 30 minutes on the bike. You know. I, good. I, I don't push myself too hard. You know. I just, just, That's good, actually. Just enough That's to get. That's all you need. Huh? That's all you need. Well, it, you know, when I first used to be doing Better. this bike thing, I used to sweat like a like a like a stuck pig, right? Mm -hmm. And now I don't anymore. You know, it's like I I guess I've gotten uh, gotten used to it. So I've got to push it harder or do some other stuff. But I don't want to get on the treadmill because every time I get on the treadmill, it goes faster than I do, and uh, <laughs> I, I I I start falling down, and it's not good. So I don't like the treadmill. Once you start getting in shape on uh, like on the bike like that, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a good thing to switch because your body just adapts and then you don't get any further. So I switch to what? Like another exercise or you pet or you do a, a different workout on the bike and go a little harder. Or you do intervals or change it up. Yeah. And the elliptical. otherwise you're just used to it. Yeah. I don't, <clears throat> yeah. I don't know about the elliptical either. But I found out that since I think it was March, I've I've been there, but over 150 times since yes, March. Yes, the human wow. body is most unfortunately a complicated organism in that regard, among several others. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then there's some vestigial organs, the ones that you know you have but don't serve any purpose, like my penis. So, oh yeah, uh, I knew you. Were and your wondering. nipples. What the heck? Why do you have nipples? Alert from uh, we, 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 server. we don't need nipples. Low battery. What is that? <laughs> Alert from what low battery. That? Uh, That's uh, coming up. Has your machine developed self awareness or something, or what's going on? Here, let, I said let, nipples. Let mine talk crazy. to yours. No, it's it wasn't. Uh, Good night, pal. My battery was going bad. Oh, uh, I, you, uh, I thought it was filled. You know, with wait, wait a minute, your battery and what? I hope not your pacemaker. No, no. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> no. I wonder what it would say, <laughs> what the message would be if it were your pacemaker. Say well, goodbye. Pacemaker say is, goodbye, is, pal. Is, <laughs> <laughs> better a pacemaker than goodbye. a bike. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, Mickey just did it when I it, 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 the first time at night that I push the button, like after about push him, you know, when I I get him to go. It's eleven fifty-seven. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I gotta get that. Yeah, but it 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 goes. He go he goes. Good night, pal. I heard that. And I don't like being called pal. I want to punch <laughs> this little rat in his face. <clears throat> now you see, if I go over to Minnie, she's slightly different. It's 11.57. Good night. See? There. Isn't that sweet? Gender neutral. Mm. No, it's not gender neutral. That's the girly version of it. Well, aside from the sound of her voice, it's gender neutral and that she doesn't say pal or honey or sweetheart or any of that, any of that other shit. Oh, right. You got a point there. Of do course I even I say do. dude? Like, good night, dude. Uh, I don't yeah. know. It's the, only, it's, the, it's the only watch face that talks to me. You know. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen. Thanks, yeah. Jeff. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Brian, Best have a happy Jumbe. Thanksgiving. Uh, uh, Turn uh, this over to the Jack Bishop uh, after party. Tony, uh, uh, please have a happy Thanksgiving. Same thing with you, Ray. Tom, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Kevin, you too. You too, Phil. Uh, also Back to uh, Jack Bishop and also to Bree for calling us tonight and being part of our little Thanksgiving festival here. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. That's the group we call the Citizen Panel, and they can all wave goodbye to you. If Yeah, there they are. See? There they go. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay. Thanks to our Citizens Panel. We really appreciate their being here, not only tonight, but throughout the year. Uh, some of those are the real prime people that call this program and we really appreciate it to those of you who didn't call tonight well i want to wish you a happy thanksgiving as well uh no shows for the next uh, two nights and then we'll be back next tuesday but uh there's still shows coming like jack bishop is on next with the intersection that's followed by connections at one o'clock eastern time We'll be back with full programming on Tuesday at 9.30 with Damian Chaplin and The Exchange. And then I'll be here again, yeah, 
on, uh, on, on Tuesday night at 10. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, and I like to say it, and I mean it more now than ever if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.